Creating dynamic layouts that just sort of adjusted to your screen size used to involve a lot of media queries and a lot of work and a lot of thought. And nowadays with CSS Grid, it is just so easy. So in this video, we're going to be looking at exactly that and then building this layout out using CSS Grid. Hello, my front end friends, and welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad that you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And if I can't make you fall in love with it, I'm hoping that I can at least help you be a little bit less frustrated with it. Today, I wanna to do that by exploring the wonders that are CSS Grid and just how easy it is to make dynamic layouts using it. We won't only be exploring Grid in this one, I'm gonna build out the card elements that we're doing. We're gonna be exploring things like aspect ratio and some other modern CSS techniques as well well as we go through it. If you want to focus only on the CSS grid parts and the more layout, I have put chapters to everything along the way so you can look below and jump to the different sections you want. Or if you want to watch how I do this from start to finish, well then you don't have to do anything because we're jumping into it right now. So let's go. All right. So you can see here I have started with a little bit of stuff and I forgot to put a title dynamic grid layout. There we go. Um, but you can see I do have a little bit of stuff that is here. If you're new and you're using VS Code, you can get most of this just by putting an exclamation point. And you can see that says emit abbreviation because when I hit tab, then we get a lot of that starting template stuff uh, that is there. And the only other thing that I've done up until now is linked to the Google fonts I'm using as well as my style sheet. And if you want to follow along with me and just sort of steal my head, I have put the link to the GitHub repo in the description just down below. And for my demo.css file that I have right here, I have done a little bit in here already where I've set up my font families as custom properties. Um, I've also come through and added Andy Bell's modern CSS reset that's here. And I've done a little bit of styling. I've created a container and a little bit of styling on my body. If you want to get Andy Bell's reset, once again, the link is down in the description below. And what we'll be doing here is let's start by using that container. And I'm going to build out one card just for now so we can follow along with the structure that I have for it. But knowing and understanding the structure in our HTML is always pretty important. So in here, what we'll do is we'll do a product grid like this. So I'm just going to put dot card and this is using Emmet again. Uh, so just dot card, hit tab and it comes out. If you want more, there's a linked video down below. Uh, that explores Emmet a lot more. If you are in VS Code, Emmet comes pre-installed with it. You don't have to do anything. It should just work. If you're not using VS Code, but using a different editor, there's always extensions you can uh, grab that add the add Emmet to your editor to make life a lot easier. Uh, so here I have the individual card and there's two things we're gonna need in here. I'm gonna do an image with a class of card double underscore IMG for image. If you've been following me for a while, you know I'm a big fan of the BEM naming convention. But you also know that I'm sort of breaking away from it a little bit, but this is the type of case where I would still definitely be using it. Uh, I do also happen to already have some images here that I have. So hat one, two, three, four, up to seven, because we're going to have seven cards. And I got all of these from uh, OnSplash. So if you want, you can grab the same ones or your own images from OnSplash, or they are in the GitHub repo if you want the same ones that I have. One thing is they're not optimized at all. We're doing a quick demo, I'm not focused on that, so I didn't optimize the images. And we wanna give these all alt text, so just really quickly, I'll do that. All right, so that's there, we can see my card there, or my, my image, I should say. Uh, and the next part in the card here that I'm gonna have is a card content. And depending on the layout that you want for your cards and different things you're doing, you might not need this. Sometimes you can just have a card, you put your image, and then you have your heading and your other stuff that's going to be in there. But in this case, I'm, I'm going to add a card content uh, because of how I'm going to organize this. And we'll see more of that in the CSS when we get there. So if you're, uh, and it'll make, I think it'll make a bit of sense once we get there. So here I'm going to do an H2 uh, with a class of card title. And this case is one of those areas where you might not need specific styling for card titles. You might have utility classes you could use or other things. I'm going to stick with this for now, but if you have other classes you could use, you know, you don't necessarily need a card title just because it's the title of your card. It could just be a regular one or it could be, a, you know, it could be a more reusable class than a card title, but we're doing a simple demo here. So I think this is the most straightforward way to do it. Uh, so we'll have a card title, plus we're going to have a paragraph, which is going to be my card price, plus we're going to have a paragraph that is my card description. And let's just hit tab on that, and there we go. That is the basic structure that I'll be using 
for the cards in here. And so now what I'm gonna do is just quickly set up the other seven cards, add some filler content to all of these, and then we'll start working on our CSS. All right, so let's go and look, and you can see all of these are in place and everything is looking all right. We have some fonts and stuff already set up, which is fun, but nothing too fancy going on. And what we're going to do now is actually start styling all of this up. So the very first thing we want is to select that product grid that we created, and we wanna throw a display of grid on there. And let's just do that. And of course, when you do that, it's always a bit disappointing compared to Flexbox, where Flexbox stuff happens. Grid, nothing happens at first. So we wanna come in and do our grid template columns. And for now, we're gonna change this. So I'm just gonna set up three columns with one FR like that. And if you're new to grid and you've never really used grid before, I think you could still follow along with this one, but if you'd like more in-depth information on it or how to get started with grid the simplest way possible, I've already looked at that and sort of explored things like this. So there's a card popping up or the link down in the description. Uh, but if you wanna keep on trucking with this one, see how cool this is and then go check that out after. I'll remind you near the end of this one about that other video. Um, and so now we can actually sort of see a little bit more of what we're doing and how things are gonna be going. And let, if we look at it, there's a few good things and a few bad things. One of the good things is everything is sort of laid out in a, a grid, which is nice but right now the images are all different sizes which sort of sucks some are landscapes some are portrait the portrait ones even some are taller some are shorter uh, which is not ideal the overall layout it's just not fantastic so we're going to start by focusing and fixing up just the general styling of the card itself and then from there we're going to move into and actually get the grid to be a bit more dynamic so if you so like I said at the beginning, if you wanna skip forward a little bit and just get the dynamic grid part of it, just check the chapters down below and you can jump to that part. But there's a lot of good things we're gonna be looking at with aspect ratios and, and other cool stuff here, I think, that are gonna make it really come together and work really well. So let's come and start by doing that and say we're gonna do a, let's put our choose our card itself. And just so we can visualize what's happening, I'm gonna put a three pixel solid and we'll do a hot pink, which there we go and we get these borders that show up just so we can visualize what's happening. And one thing with grid is even if a card has less content in it compared to one of its siblings, it will stretch to fit a lot like with uh, Flexbox, right? The height of things will grow automatically. So we can look at how we're gonna fix that, but we're gonna do it in a second. The other thing is I do want some overlapping content here and I do wanna control these images a little bit more as well. So the first thing, let's start with those images actually. And so we're gonna choose my card IMG, which is my card image. And what we want to do is we want to use this new property or newish that is supported in all major browsers now, which is aspect ratio. But the thing with aspect ratio is it won't really do anything out of the box. So if I say one here, it's and or we'll do one over one, which means the width and the height should be the same. And I'm going to hit save and nothing is going to happen. And that's a little bit disappointing. Um, I don't, sometimes you're going to do this and it's going to work and other times it won't. But what's happening is right now my images don't have a width or height on them. Um, in that reset that I have set up, one of the most important things in here is, let's find it, here we go. Um, my image and picture have a max width of 100%, which is uh, really good for just making our images responsive because if we didn't have that, you can see that my images uh, are actually just gonna be super big and overflowing and just ruin the entire layout. So that is one of those things for responsive layouts that we always want to have. But in this case, with images, if we wanna use aspect ratio, they actually need a width on them. So we could say width of, let's just put 100 pixels for now to see the magic happen. You can see they're all squares now, but that's not what we want because you know we want this to be dynamic, to grow, to shrink. So as long as we have a width, we can have a width and we just want that to be, you gotta hit the right key, to 100%. And now the width is 100% and the height will match, it won't be 100%, it'd be whatever that width is. And now you can see they're all squares. And if we make this bigger or smaller, they're gonna grow and they're gonna shrink based on that space that they have available to them. That they maintain and they keep being perfect squares. So that's a good thing, but of course we broke something along the way here. And now all my images are either being squished or pulled or smushed or whatever, one way or the other, and they don't look good. They're being distorted. But another cool thing, if we use aspect ratio, I like doing this with my images, is an object fit cover, which if you don't know about, is a lot like background size of cover, where it will prevent the images from being stretched. It just means they're gonna be cropped. 
and so you'll lose a little bit of your image. The default is center center, so it will always focus on the middle. You can change that behavior as well. And if you'd like a bit more information, I have covered object fit in the past. So once again, card or link in the description. The nice thing with this is you can bring in dynamic content. You don't have to worry about what image you're bringing in. As we saw here, some were landscape, some were portrait, and it's going to work and crop them. You still want to optimize your images and not bring in these massive images like I have right now. So that would be a story for another day, but optimizing your images is still important, but it's nice that you could bring in images and not have to crop every image to be a square to use them as a square and then you could reuse them in other places with their normal dimensions and stuff but let's keep on going with this one so the next thing I want to do is actually stack my content on top of each other a little bit and I could do this directly on the card itself but I think more of a utility class could be useful and I'm going to call it stacked and stacked is going to have a display of grid on it the reason I like a utility class for this is well in this situation we're working in one very specific imaginary world where we only have a product grid, but you'd probably be using this on a larger site. And maybe you'd want to use this on a card, but maybe you'd also want to use this on your hero area, or you might want to use it on a call to action, or you might want to use the same thing in multiple areas. So this stacked class could be useful. And let's go to my HTML and add it. So there's a really fast way to do that because I want it on all of my cards. So let's come up to the first card. This is in VS code. I can push, put, just put my cursor anywhere here and push control D. And it's going to select that one and then I can just keep pushing it and it should keep going through and just selecting all the cards until I have all of them selected. So every time you do control D, it will select the next one uh, that matches that selection. And I want to do, I have to, it, now it's selected the word card itself. So I actually have to rewrite card and then I'm going to put a space and write stacked. So we add that stacked class on there and I'm going to hit save and it does nothing because we just added a display of grid and display of grid by itself doesn't do very much. So what's the point of this? Well, this is where we can come in and say stacked and select any direct child that is inside of there. So in this case, it's going to select my image and that card content. And that's why I wanted to group the card content uh, as one element instead of having it as multiple ones, because this is going to place stuff on top of each other. So if I had like an H2 a paragraph paragraph just floating around, they'd actually overlap and that would not be good. And so here with this stacked class, we're gonna say that it has a grid column of one over two, which is the default, but uh, we just wanna make sure that everything's overlapping. So I'm gonna be explicit with it. And a grid row of one over two. And I'm gonna hit save, and now you can see everything is overlapping because they're living in the same space. Uh, another thing right now is it is working because if I come here, my image is first and then the content is after. If I had my image here and I actually had this after and I hit save, you'll see that it's hiding behind my image because the image comes second, so the stacking is on top of it. But a nice thing with grid is, let's just do my card content. You could do a Z index on here of 10, and it's gonna pull it up. You don't need a positioning or anything like that. When you're using CSS grid, Z index just works within it. So uh, grid is just so fantastic at overlapping content, it's crazy. Now I'm not gonna do that necessarily, but it could be depending on how your markup is and how things work, just a quick, uh, a nice little quick win there that you could use to, to avoid that. And now is where we get into a bit more of the fun and games of styling this card, because I'm, I don't want it to be exactly like this. And actually let's, let's do one more thing. Um, let's come on my card uh, content itself. And because some of it will show up on top of images, so I will give these a background that is white, just so we can see. Now the problem is they're stretching, they're filling up the entire space, which is no good. So let's do an align self of end. And this is with grid, it's living within this grid cell, but it's stretching to fit. And align self end will mean it's going to go to the bottom of the cell that it's inside of. Cool. Uh, I'm also gonna add a little bit of margin here. So I'm gonna do a margin, the top doesn't really matter. So let's just do a 0.5 uh, rem on all sides for now. So you can just see it leaves a little bit of the space on the left and the right. And a little bit of padding on here will be useful too, 0.5 rem, just so the text isn't glued to the sides. So I think that looks a little bit nicer. But of course we don't want it covering like most of our image because that's not very good. So this is where, why I put these original pink borders on here in the first place is on these cards, we can come in and throw an aspect ratio on these guys. So aspect ratio, and I'm gonna do a one over 1 1.5 and hit save. So that means they have to be 1.5. We saw before with the, the images that one over one means it's the width and height are the same. So now the width is one, my height is 1.5. So it will be 1.5 times taller than it is 
uh, wide and look at that. So we've sort of set a height on these without actually setting a height on them. And at large screen sizes, again, we're gonna make this more dynamic. It's gonna make more sense. We're gonna play with our fonts and other stuff. Um, I am in Firefox right now, so I can do a shift control M and open up the responsive mode. If you're in Chrome, just open your dev tools first and then you can use the same shortcut uh, as long as you're active in your dev tools. And uh, so here's where it gets useful is at these smaller screen sizes, you can see that, you know, we get where the text is actually going to overlap. And most of the time we're actually going to have these smaller sizes where it's going to be working. Now stuff is breaking right now, but it's not responsive. We have problems anyway. So we're going to be fixing these as we make the grid more dynamic, but it's to get into these situations where the text is on top of the image. We want to make sure it's readable. It is a little bit weird that on the bottom, it just nothing happens. So I think the best solution for that is, let's just move this back out of the way. Uh, on the card content, let's also add a box shadow. So box shadow, we'll do 0 0.25 rem, just so it's zero is the offset this way. 0.25 rem is gonna be the offset up and down. Uh, we'll do a pretty big blur, one rem, and I'm gonna do an RGB of 0, 0, 0 over 0.1. And this is the new color syntax. It's just the fastest way to make transparent black. You don't need an A on there, it still works. And let's get rid of that border so we can actually see what that looks like. And I think that's actually not terrible. The only issue that I'm sort of running into right now is that the cards are really, these, these descriptions are so far stuck down to the bottom. I'd like it if they were shifted up a little bit. And there's different ways we could achieve that through gaps, through other things. Um, the nice thing now is we sort of have this, this cell that's set up that everything's living in. So I'm actually going to just change my margin on here. I usually don't use margins in this way, but because of the aspect ratios we have on here that sort of lock out everything together. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to bother with a gap on this or not. So I'm just going to come on the card content here itself. And so this is going to be 0.5 on the top and the top really doesn't matter. It could even be a zero, but we'll do a 0.5 on the left and the right. And let's do a two rem on the bottom, which is just gonna shift everything up by two rem and sort of create that distance here. And so it just means the card is still that size. It's just, we're, we're creating a, a space underneath. We're shifting those up a little bit within the card. Um, so, and again, there's different ways I could do this, but I'm gonna do it this way for now. And I think that just sort of solves a little bit of that problem there. And the cards are looking pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of quick styling on the typography here to make things look a little bit nicer. So let's choose our card title. And this font just happens to be really big and bulky and potentially could cause some problems. So I'm going to shrink the title down a little bit. Title to 1.25 remish, remish, rem. And it's not working because of course you can't have a font title, Kevin, a font size. There we go. Just a little bit smaller. Um, because it's such a bold font, it's going to grab the attention anyway. Uh, a line height because with all cap text the line height right now doesn't look good so we'll do a 1.1 1.1 I think would be perfect on there uh, and let's just give it a color too color of uh, we'll do fire brick because why not just to have some color on there I would normally use that have some actual colors for your color scheme and stuff uh, and let's also just come on my card price and let's give that a font size of uh, 1.75 rem just to make it bigger it's going to stand out versus this but the interesting thing here is even though the price is a bigger font size than the title the title still stands out more because it's bold it's strong it has a color on it and it's still really easy to see the prices so for me i like that uh, and then these little mini descriptions after they don't matter so much so there we go uh, I'm pretty happy how the individual cards are working. Um, I, I mentioned I wasn't sure if we were going to put a gap but because we do have space underneath. Maybe it does actually make sense to have a little bit of a gap. So let's come on to my product grid and let's just put a small one, maybe 0.25 rem, maybe even a 0.125 rem just to create like a small space between them. This is just up to you how much space you want. You know, it can be really tiny. I'm going to go with the really tiny one, but you could play around and do whatever you want with something like that. Um, and yeah, the cards themselves are looking pretty good now. So let's come in and actually make this a little bit more dynamic. So when we get to those small screen sizes, we don't get this happening. <laughs> um, so to do that, there's a few different things we're going to do. First, actually, we're going to make the dynamic grid and then we're going to create like a featured card that's going to be bigger and make things even more interesting. And so here is what is creating our grid right now. And the columns are just automatically being created. We're going to stick with that whenever I use grid as much as possible. I do like relying on them being automatically created. 
Uh, I'm breaking here down onto another line just so I can you know, leave my browser smaller. And what we're gonna do is a repeat of auto fit. And if you haven't used auto fit before, uh, it's a really cool property or value, I guess, with the repeat syntax. This is only with grid. And basically it says, you know, I'm gonna give it some sizes that I want it to be, and it's gonna just gonna make it work. It's automatically fitting. There's also autofill. Uh, the differences between autofill and autofit are very small. If you wanna know more about them, I do have a video, so card up there in the description. Uh, but in general, like 99% of the time, you probably want autofit. That's like the TLDR of that video. Um, and so what do we wanna do with autofit is throw a min max at it. And min max means these cards have a minimum size and a maximum size that they're allowed to be, or the columns, which the cards are living in. And so the minimum size, I'm gonna go with a 15 rem and a maximum size of one FR. The minimum size here really depends on your layout and stuff. So this is a number that could change. You can play with it, try different things. But in general, you want it to be pretty small because you wanna make sure it gets to the smallest screen size and doesn't cause any issue. So let's hit save on that. And if we, nothing changed, Kevin, ha, ah, that's okay. Nothing changed just because of, we were at the right screen size for it. But let's see what happens now when we get, now we have four columns, now we have five columns, now we have six columns, and look at that. And then if we shrink down, it's gonna shrink the other way, and it's just gonna magically work all the way that we go down. So wonderful and so cool. This is like, just seeing this work for me makes me so happy. <laughs> and how hard things like this used to be. Um, just this auto fit working for that. Now it's not perfect by any means yet, but already I'm just, I'm so happy with how that's working. Clearly here, like this doesn't look good. So we're gonna fix all this up. Um, but for now, and just as a starting point, I'm really happy with how this has already started to work. And so basic, and basically what it's doing is it's like, okay, if I, I'm, my cards are, can be a minimum of 15. So the cards are shrinking, shrinking. Oh, I can't be 15 anymore. The one FR is just saying pretty much take up as much space as you can. So boop, they get as big as they can and then they keep shrinking down until they hit that 15 rem and then it goes, oh, we, we're, we're at that 15 point, we're gonna break and then we have two columns and we're gonna break and then we have one column. And it stops at this biggest size right here just because I have a, they're within a container. So that's also being limited by the container. There is the one limitation that these items can't be centered within this space. They're always gonna be sort of empty and floating like that. So if you don't have a lot of items, it can look a little bit weird, but as long as you have enough items to fill up the space a little bit, it does it, it works perfectly fine. And for a lot of purposes, having one empty thing here is never gonna bother a user. So just throwing that out there, because some people do complain about that. And there's Flexbox solutions that you could use for some of this as well, which are quite a bit different, but we'll stick with the grid one because for this purpose, I think it works really well. Now on to getting this to work right there. So let's come on, I'm gonna come down. There's actually a few different approaches you could use for this, but I'm gonna do a card featured. Now you might not like the double class on something like this. So you could have a card featured as a modifier class. That would be perfectly fine. Uh, if you wanted to take a more of a cube CSS approach, you could do a card. Uh, you could do a card that has the um, that has like a data featured equals true, and something like that could work as well. There's different approaches that you could use for for setting up a a featured card like this. I don't mind the extra specificity that gets thrown onto something if I do this. Uh, it's only going to apply to cards, so it's perf for me this is fine. But again, if you like this. Um, approach better, which is more the BEM style, go with that style, go with the style that you wanna be writing your CSS or your team is writing their CSS because that's obviously very important as well. Uh, and there's actually another approach that you could use with like child selectors on your product grid. So it really depends how you wanna do it. And what we'll do is we'll come up onto this and let's go up to this first one up here and let's add featured. And in, in really like normally you probably have a link on one of these. And so it'd be really important that your first, the, the feature would only apply to the first one because it could actually may, potentially break the layout. It depends. Maybe there's more work you could do to get this to work. But the one thing I wouldn't do is pull the order, change the order and pull like this item to the beginning. Cause then if you're tabbing through the tab order would actually get messed up uh, if there were links in here that were available. So I would probably always wanna make sure that the first one is the featured one. And again, one way you could do that is actually like a um, product card first child instead of having this. 
you could even have featured and then like first child which would make sure that it's only being applied if the card is the first child but um i'm gonna say that you have a good design system in place and people are going to follow the rules uh the featured i'm saying that and i'm putting it on the wrong one so let's come up here and make sure it's on my first one so featured so this guy here is my featured one so on my card featured we're going to say a grid row of span two and we're going to hit save and you can see it just sort of breaks everything because what what's happening now is this is actually taking up all of the room here even though we don't you know the stuff hasn't expanded to fill it, but it's it's using all that space. So this guy's had to move over and we're going to do a grid column of span two and hit save and boom, it gets nice and big. Now it doesn't look fantastic. There's issues with it, but you maybe you can see how already we, we've gotten something that's a little bit more interesting. And because of that auto fit magic that we have, it just sort of works at all these screen sizes still. And it's just like content will wrap down around it as needed. If you had more stuff, it would just keep on going. Um, I find this just really cool and really fun to be able to play around with. It will cause breakage, things to break, <laughs> um, at smaller screen sizes right now, so we will fix that. But let's focus on just getting it styled and looking a little bit nicer. Uh, and I won't lie, there's a few little magic numbers that are going to come into this, but sometimes, but sometimes, as much as we want to avoid magic numbers, it does happen. <laughs> Um, but we will keep up with our card featured and we want to change a little bit more of the styling on here. So first I'm going to choose my card image that is on, which is in my featured one. And this is, you know, I could, I guess, just drop the card, you know, we're raising, double raising specificity here. So you could just do featured card image if you wanted. I did card featured here, so I'm just going to keep up with that. I think it's perfectly fine. Um, in the future with CSS, we're going to have nesting, which makes naming and doing this stuff a little bit less clumsy looking. The specificity jumps or you know high specificity on this is still here. There's ways of doing this without raising your specificity, but I just find it makes for messy, messier HTML and it's easy enough to maintain here. I want this to have the high specificity on this shouldn't be breaking anything. I'm, I'm wanting to overwrite things that it normally had anyway. So for me, it's fine. If you really don't like this, you could just add new classes of like card, uh, image card featured, and then just have that, you know, on and styling your individual cards. So you have like the double class or whatever you want. There's so many different ways to approach this. But on this card image, what we're going to do is change the aspect ratio. Aspect ratio on this one, instead of being a square, will be a one over 1.25. And this is where it's a little magic numbery, but look at that, it lines up perfectly. <laughs> Um, and maybe there's math on figuring this out. I just tried this and it worked and that's why I was stuck with these numbers. But again, we have a 1.5 plus a 1.5 and then I'm like, so there's, there's probably a way that smart math people can use to figure out what numbers you need to put on the two of them for this to work. <laughs> but that solves so many of the problems that we were just looking at. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so now let's just go and see what happens at these uh, small screen sizes, it's looking all right. And then as we get to these bigger sizes, it just sort of lines up with everything and still keeps on looking all right. And so I'm pretty happy with that and how all that looks. The one thing that's a little bit funky is the smaller font size that's on here. Like we have all this more space to be working with. So maybe you'd also have something like a card featured, featured uh, card title. And then here the font size could be like a 1.75 rem or something like that, just to pump up the title on the featured one, just so it fits with that extra weight that the card already has. Uh, and that should not impact anything until potentially at small screen sizes maybe. Um, but that's gonna be fine because what we're actually gonna do, as I mentioned, what's happening is it's breaking things at small screen sizes. You can see here, these are getting all mucked up and stuff. And it's because we've told this, it has to take up two rows or two columns. So that's forcing two columns on my grid, which is making every, even here, I don't want two columns at these sizes anymore. I want everything just to be shrunk down and to fit. But it's forcing two columns because it's, it, this is, even though I'm not declaring it on my grid itself, this is creating the column here automatically. So we can solve that really easily just by all of this featured stuff gets put into a media query. And in this case, let's try 40M. And I saw something in the technical preview of Safari. And the reason I always get asked why I use M and it's because with pixels and with rem, Safari, if you zoom in and out, acts differently than the other browsers do when you're using it. And this M is not related to your root font size. It's related to the browser's default font size. So even if you change your HTML font size, rem or M in a media query will not be impacted. Um, but I saw that 
it in the technical preview for Safari that's just come out or is coming out that rem um, is they changed how rem is calculated so we might be able to use um, it might be consistent between browsers going forward but I'm going to stick with m for now and I'm just going to take all of this and wrap it and let's tab this all over and hit save and there we go so now at the smaller screen sizes everything is stacking and then when we get to these larger screen sizes right around here the featured card clicks in and then we get that and maybe actually in this case we could bring this up to like a 60. Um, so we have more of just a regular grid at smaller screen sizes and then when you get to a large enough screen size then th that featured card clicks in because it does take up quite a bit of room once it does click in so at a larger screen size and it comes in and then we get this nice cool layout that works and you know i could even prevent i could get it to lock in more at this size that's just based on the container that i have set up but it also depends how many cards you have and everything else now another thing if you wanted to do more work on this at these small screen sizes the heights of these uh, are not perfect so that could be a time when you come in and there's different ways you could approach that um, but that is our aspect ratio so we could fix this aspect ratio by saying that it's, you know, you could change that within a media query. So maybe a 1.25 is actually the default. And then even here, then we can come in here and do our um, card image aspect ratio is a one over one. And now at these smaller sizes, it probably works a little bit better. And then when we get to the larger screen size, uh, once that guy kicks in and we get that the featured card popping on in, then we get that new aspect ratio that comes in and maybe that works a little bit better. And of course, this really depends on your content, your other things. I'm just creating this arbitrary media query point right now. So it depends on your layout and everything else. And if there was any of those videos that I mentioned throughout this one that you wanted to check out, that you didn't check out yet. Again, they're all linked in the description below for the individual ones. But I've also put together a custom playlist of all of those videos to make it easy to find all of them. And you can use that playlist to easily find the one you're looking for. So that playlist is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, a really big thank you to my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, Adam, Johnny, Randy, Tim, and Stuart, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.